It's not coming on. There we go. Hello, everyone. So, how is everyone today? Uh, Chris Campling has sent his apologies beforehand. Um, he's working. So we'll give a big shout out to Chris Campbell. Say hello to everyone. Uh, hey, say hello to Chris. Right. So today, hello, Stuart Sullivan. How are you? Um, now, up until last week, I was saying, oh, sorry. Do you know, very, very rude of me. Um, I'm Penny. I'm going to hand you over to my co-host for a hello. I was, I was wondering. <laughs> you know, I'm so hello. sorry. No, that's right. Hello, everyone. Hi, Stuart. Hi, Adrian um yeah i'm doing good enjoying the weather it's hot but it's, it was nice today it wasn't it wasn't so warm i was gonna say it wasn't quite so warm was it no um so yeah so dave say says hello um always nice to see dave say fleetwood j says hi at all so as i was um i was about to say before i rudely interrupted myself um, about four or five issues on the chart, I kept saying this is the best issue yet. Um, now, obviously, I've not had a look at the parts yet because they're still sealed. Um, all I can see from these parts is be bloody careful when you open them because there's so many tiny parts. Um, but looking at these charts, I've never seen anything like this before. So we're going to be doing the uh, fit and, finishing and fitting the engine. And that's page one. Let's, see, let's try, try and change the view, shall we? I make it harder for myself. <coughs> so there's page one. Page two, page three. I've got a digital copy. Page of four, page five, page six, page seven, page eight. Nine pages of instructions. How good is that? And <coughs> I had a quick flick through and the majority of the parts that we've accumulated over the last few weeks we're going to be adding on to the, the rest of the rest of the chassis um so with uh, my colleague's help shall we first of all check the parts yeah there should be uh, yeah i've already had a little count out there's 22 parts in total not including the screws <coughs> excuse me i'm still getting over a cold I had about four months ago so that must be the most yet, I think. 22 I... parts. Yes, 20, 22 unique parts must be. Um, actual number of parts. Right, so you see, I've learned lessons from before. I'm tipping parts out. Um, we were doing some Lego builds um, last couple of Fridays. And uh, oh, I kept losing bits. I mean, obviously, it didn't help when I kept knocking the... Uh, the trays over right so even though i think that's empty i'm not going to throw it in the bin um and i also notice we've got some screws that we've never had before because we've got so many different types of screw uh, i'm gonna tip all of them straight into my uh pill pot holder except for the new ones which i haven't found a space for if that's okay with you guys um so Excuse me, shall we make a start? Yeah, right. I suppose we need to check off all these parts. Uh, yeah. Ooh, okay. So 29A uh, is a cap. A cap. And it looks like a silver realm okay. counter type thing. Change my view, my focal point, sorry. Let's have it nice and close, shall we? So this is what I believe is the cap. And that's plastic. Yeah, that looks it. Okay. Okay, 29B is a stub pipe. And that looks like the stub pipe. Again, it's plastic. Hello, love minis. Hello, uh, how are we? Right, 29C is a duct. No, they're look they're oh hang on, like yeah, now that's oh god. So I've just noticed the uh right and um, that is plastic again really nice finish all of these plastic silver parts are really nice finishes 
Okay, 29D okay. Uh, is a link. Okay. Oh, be careful when you're holding small parts, guys. And that's plastic. Lovely. Uh, 29E is a another cap, but smaller. All right, I think that's this. Yeah. Oh, it's on the radiator cap to me. Could well be. Oh, yeah. I think you might be right. Okay. Uh, 29F, coolant header tank. Ah, uh, yeah. So that, that looks like this. It's that. plastic. But again, like all of these parts, if I told you these were metal and you didn't have the part yourself, you, you'd probably believe me. Put a detail on that nut there, that bolt. That's really nice. Okay. Okay, 29G is instruction plate. one now i've only seen these through the plastic and i was really happy with this check this out guys this is um this is about five millimeters by five millimeters oh wow look at the writing on that was it say warning pressure cut what yeah, and then it says, yeah, it's so small I can't read it, but I can tell it's good. Let's see if I can get it closer. You bring it nice and close, you should be able to see it. Oh, yeah. No, I can't actually read that because the monitor is backwards. I can see it, but it needs to be really still, and it's obviously quite hard. Yeah, and you know I'm not still. Also, pressure is escape or something. Oh, allow, 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 it says allow pressure to escape. Ah. And then it says something warning. Oh, brilliant. That, 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 yeah, that detail is amazing. That is brilliant, that is isn't amazing. it? Uh, that's one thing that DeLorean lacks. Um, and someone's done decals for things like that because they haven't included any of that. So it just shows how good quality and how well thought out this 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 yeah. Build is. Yeah. Okay, twenty so, nine H is a back plate. Ah, there we go. Okay, this is. Oops. It's actually hard to tell, but it is actually plastic. Nah, yeah. you're lying. It's metal. No, it's plastic. <laughs> you can tell from the from the press from the yeah. press marks from the uh but yeah no that's that's raises a good point doesn't it uh 29i is a line right now this line was inside this part which we're going to go through later on but i'm assuming that it's it's just gone in there well well it was sort of in transport um because i'm i'm looking ahead at some of the other parts and this is fairly unique so i'm going to assume at this point that this is the line okay 29j through to 29o are fuel lines now these i am really happy with because they look like they've got numbers on they have oh oh do you know what i thought these were rubber they're plastic, so they're going to be. They are meant to be in that position, so that you don't get the get them muddled up. They've got these little tabs on. Now, I assume these tabs have got to come off. They're not on the real bus. So, J. Oh. That one's not got a tab on it. Oh, that's okay. Right, J, K, L, M. Um, I'm I'm not pulling these up to the camera. These are these are all equality wise. They're all absolutely identical. The only difference is that they're different shape, and they are different numbers. 
And do you know what? These, these tweezers are actually useless. Like, this is... <laughs> These, these are the root master tweezers. There you go. They're actually more effective if you bend them. But, oh, I learned a new word the other day. And this made me laugh so much. Um, these, these, the root master screwdriver and the tweezers and, and all the tools that come with artwork. Um, they're obviously, they're cheap, but they're functional. They're, and so they're referred to as made made of Chineseium, which basically mm. means a cheap part. <laughs> I just thought that was brilliant. Okay, so I've got all of those um, tube wire things from okay. all the way through to O. So, yeah, that's brilliant. And then 29p feed pipe. Okay, and I can see that there's a part got intermingled there. And that is amazing. That's either been, I'm not going to fiddle with that too. Let's bring the zoom back out. Right, there we go. I can't tell at the moment if these are painted or if they've actually been assembled. I assume they've been painted. Um, but they're really amazing. I, I, you know, if anyone complains about the parts this week, I, I want to see them. Yeah, definitely. That's yeah, the thought that's gone into this is absolutely amazing. Yeah. Okay. Okay, yeah. Uh, moving on. So twenty uh, nine Q is a fuel gauge. And pipe. this is the uh the one that was in that mingled with the last pipe. Yeah, no, I'm really happy with this. Okay. Twenty nine R is a fuel line. Okay, now I think it's this one, and the reason I think it's this one is it's got this fat a bit on the end. Yeah, that looks right. Uh, 29S is a line, another line. Okay, and there it is. This is why I was worried, but then it's the only one like that. Uh, 29T is another instruction plate. Okay, and this is just a fuel cut off switch, fuel on and off. Oh, brilliant. Again, that detail. Yeah, it's the little small things like this that just makes the difference, I think. Uh, 29U is a tap. No, I really like this because it's colourful. Just in case you're thirsty. Yeah, but I wouldn't want to drink the liquid that comes out. No. Of no. And then 29V is a beam. And this is metal. This is genuine metal. So to give you an idea of the parts quality, one of these is metal, one of these is plastic. And how do we know you're not lying? Because you said the plastic looked like metal and you we, we wouldn't know the difference. Yeah, I mean, the metal, it looks like plastic to me. <laughs> But yeah, that's that's the parts quality difference. Yeah, but you couldn't tell them apart, could you? No, no. Okay. Okay. And then so it... while you describe the screws, I'm going to be popping them into my um, uh, pots, if you don't mind. Yeah. So before I start, there is a, a little notice on here that says many small parts are supplied with this issue. Work carefully. Checking the instructions thoroughly as it's detailed and a delicate and delicate work. Yeah, I can see a lot of people struggling with this this issue. Okay, so first of all, we've got CM screws. They're one point seven by four mil. Yeah. Which I've already done in the part. Yeah. Oh, uh, GP screws one point two by four mil. Yep. And then GM screws. Tiny. tiny. GM screws, 2.3 by 5 mil. Uh, you also should have JM screws, oh. 1.2 by 3 mil. Right. JM, we've dealt with before, but we haven't. This is the JM screws that we're getting with this issue. Okay, 
And these are the JMs that we've had before, and you'll like these, Horlicks. Do you recognize those? Oh, the red ones. Yeah, yeah, I think you had a problem with those, didn't you? Because yeah. if I remember rightly, these are the ones that hold the um, uh, the panels on the, on the bonnet. Mm. And GP screws we've never seen before. There's only two of them. And they look very similar to the JM screws, but possibly a bit, probably a bit longer. So these will go into the screw pot. And then I'll find a home for those post production. Okay. There should be some DP screws as well, and they're 1.7 yeah. by 4. And yeah, they went in there nice with all my others. I mean, obviously, I've got a lot of spare screws because um, I'm doing the two builds, um, and I've already taken a lot of the screws out from the other issues for the second build. Okay, guys, so I am ready whenever you are. Um, shall we have a look at what we're expected to do? Yes, okay, so. Uh, hello, Lucas, so just quickly, he says he's been watching us for a couple of weeks. Well done, all of you. Thank you very much. Oh, bless you. Never be frightened to come in and say hello. And hello. Oh, excuse me. Hello, Teddy Connor. Teddy, yeah. Uh, yeah, everyone's welcome here. It's just, you know, obviously it's uh, it's just fun. Hmm. Okay, yeah. so. Step one. So you need to take the duct 29C. Are you able to expand that onto stage one, Horlicks? Oh, yes. It's all right. There we go. So, um, obviously, we need the actual engine part as well. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so take the dark 29C and then fit the four pegs on part 29C into the cylinder head. Two pegs are fitted to part 26A and two are fitted to 26B, and they are push-fit connections. Okay, so this is probably going to be the last easy part that we do. And it gets harder from here. So we've got the engine. You see, I've, I've uh, masking taped this. Now, this pipe, a lot of people are having trouble with. And I think the ones who have seen us who have attempted it and ended up breaking it and decided not to fit it, I think they're the sensible ones. Um, so I can see the four holes. Now, be careful because I now can't lay this down because it's going to risk breaking that. So I'm going to have to work airborne. Um, now, I don't know if this is going to be, yeah, it's going to be directional. And there's two ways I can tell. You see, you've got a small hole there, but you haven't got a hole on the other side. That hole needs to be faced upwards. Uh, I'm just going to check that because there's a little bit of something in the hole. A bit of flash or something. Yeah. If I was doing 3D printing, I would call that support material. There we go. It's probably come out by the time um, we push. We're obviously going to push something in there. Right. So, first of all, you need that hole facing upwards. Secondly, the way that the holes are, are done, if you put it in upside down, it's not going to go because you can see this pipe is in the way. So that's oh, not going to go in there. So it, it goes in, hole up, push it in, make sure the mask and tape isn't in the way. And. Okay. If you. This is a little bit stiff to put in. So what I'm going to do, that, that peg is slightly too large for that hole. So all I'm going to do, because I can actually see a little bit, it just needs trimming off. Um, if you're lucky enough to have some kind of trimmers, 
can just trim that end off like so just a bit make sure there's still enough peg to still go in the hole um, but I suspect that's still not going to fit and to be honest with you if it doesn't fit that's good yeah okay so if you've got a, a knife or something just give that a few light scrapes I've dry fitted it so I know it's not going to show so obviously where they put, even though it's a very thin layer of paint, it's just made that, that peg slightly fatter. And obviously the, it's in their interest to make this push fit exactly the right size so that it doesn't fall out. So, see, I've just given it, all I've done there is just scrape the paint away. Um, I don't know if that will be enough, but we'll just keep doing that. Oh, there you go, that's perfect. And the other three are absolutely fine. So try and push where the pegs are. Don't push in the middle. You could could break those pegs. Okay, and that's gone on there quite nicely there. There's a small gap, but I'm not going to worry too much. So you know, this peg is actually too small. So there's not much holding it in. I suppose you could glue it in, but I wouldn't advise it. Okay, and I think that's stage one done. Excuse the masking tape, but obviously I'm trying to protect this pipe as much as I can. Yeah, hopefully you okay. can install that later with any luck. Yeah. Okie doke. So, stage two, you need to fit the peg on the cap 29A into the recess in the stub pipe 29B, and then fit the peg onto part 29B into the hole in the duct 29c okie dokie so here we have the stub pipe and here we have the cap now it needs whoa i want to make sure i get oh there you go you can't possibly get this the wrong way around the cap has got a peg on it there's a hole at one end and there's a peg on the other end so it can only go this way there you go. And I'm just giving it a twist as I put it on. Do you know what? As it's quite light out, there we go. It's going to be better if I turn the light out, isn't it? Yeah, that's better. So then we need to, uh, in fact, I'm going to move the light over because it's that kind of light that it's a little bit difficult to read. So this is the one. Oh, that's even worse now, isn't it? There we go. Right, so we've got, this is the, for me, this is the orientation of the magazine. So I can see the hole there is towards me. So we need to fit this. Ah, oh, there, right. The reason we had that stuff in there, it's actually, it's not a hole. It's more of a, a keyhole. And this is key shape. I don't know if you can see that okay. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, so that can only go in one way. If I, I'm going to try and put it in the wrong, well, obviously it's going to look quite daft, isn't it? But I can't put it in at an angle because it's not going to go. There we go. Now, I'm not liking that. That's rather loose. I, I don't like that. Do you think I could glue that? I think maybe wait till the end of this magazine and see where we end up with um, okay. and then and then perhaps glue it afterwards. See, well, uh, I'm going to leave it off. Um, obviously, that goes into there like that. Maybe because it won't fit because I removed that little bit of something that I thought was flash. So I'm going to pop this into the screw pot so we don't lose it. And then it's, when we get to the point where we absolutely must install it, we know where it is. Yeah, I think that's a okay. good idea. So, stage three. Okay, so we need parts 29H and 29F. And we need to fit the sockets on the back plate over the ray sockets in the coolant tank. And then fix them in place with two DP screws. 
Okay, and this is the point where I realised I've not even got the screwdriver ready. That's how unorganised I am today. And for some reason, this head isn't magnetic. Right. I think it becomes magnetic when it goes into the handle. Ah! Oh, you're good at this, Horlicks. Okay, so we've got our uh, back, pl uh, our coolant tank, and we've got our back plate. And there's only one way this will go in. You see that there, it's it's this the wrong way round because it's not going to fit on the screw holes. If I turn it round, it'll go in like that. Now. I'm going to pop one screw in. I'm only going to pop the one screw in until it bites. Whoops. I can't even do that by the looks of things. I think I might have the wrong screwdriver head. Okay, this screwdriver, this screw is a little bit jumpy. Yeah, I've got the wrong screwdriver head. Sometimes you think you've got the right head. There we go. There we go. So that's just in enough, just so that it bites, look. I don't really want to apply uneven pressure. Now, because these are plastic parts, yes, they really are plastic parts. Don't want to over tighten them. So I'm just going to screw. Feel how much force it requires to screw. And then... As soon as that force increases, which is there, stop and stop. Check it, that's still loose. Give it a few screws. There you go, that's so I'll give it another half a turn. If something's in, if the screw's in tight enough to stop something from moving, especially with a plastic part, you don't necessarily have to go any further. Okay. So that's that's part uh, stage three done. Okay. So stage four, uh, we need to fit the peg on the thermostat, 28A, Supplied with issue 28. Oh, into that the hole. Why I can't find it. Oh, okay. So, this came with last week's issue, was it? So, there we've got two parts from last week, which you see is still in, in the uh, kitchen roll. And this is the part in question. Fine looking part, this is. So that's going to go in. Now I'm holding, well, there's only one hole to put it in on the side. And it doesn't really make it too clear on what direction to have it in this. There's a locating pin. No. I'm. Uh... Right, well, that's definitely the orientation, and that's going in any way you like. However, we have two screw holes there, and we see we have a peg there. So I think that once we actually fit this, and I would suggest it probably going to end up going that way, because if you look at the peg, it's then going 90 degrees to the ground. Ah, I see. But this is free-moving. I think that once we actually come to fit this to wherever, I think it will kind of sort itself out. And that takes us on to stage five. Yes. Okay. So, I need to zoom out a bit. There we go. So, fit the peg. Oh, there we go. Fit the peg on the end of the short pipe on the thermostat. Uh, 28A into the socket on the end of the cylinder head. This is a push fit connection. Okay. So there's an awful lot of holes 
and crevices and all sorts. Um, but it looks to me like this hole there, that peg, that's going to hook on like so. Uh, yeah. Okay, I'll do that again. There's the hole. So bring this right out because it's, it's going to move round. Okay. So bring it out 90 degrees. That gives you more exposure to that peg. And then just bring it up. I'm trying to get the hole. There we go. Bring the bring the peg in. And then obviously that's not right. But we're in the peg. So now we can move that to wherever the position is. It looks like it's going to go like that. But that's only a, technically a guess. Okay. So move the peg to where it's easiest for you. There's not an awful lot of room in there. So move things around. Okay. Did everyone get that? Um, hello, Fing, uh, F -f 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 Finglass D Dublin. Hello, Alan. Sorry. <laughs> Got myself in a muddle there. Okay. Does anybody want me to go through that bit again? In fact, I'll tell you what, I will go through it again. Because it's um, it's easy if you're in the right position. So we've got the black fan up. You've got two holes just above the black fan. Now you go up to the next level. And then there you've got a hole there. We're going to take this. The It's it's the, uh, the locating pin on the smaller part of the pipe. You see you've got two pipes coming out. On the smaller one, that's going to go into that hole like so. And that's all we do for this stage because it looks like we're going to attach it in the next stage, uh, next step. Okay. Thank you, Dave. So, next step uh, six. I'll just zoom in a bit. We are going to check the two screw holes at the bottom of the coolant tank. Twenty nine F are aligned with the sockets on the end of the front housing. Twenty six S of the crankcase, and then fix that in place with two CM screws. Right. Okay, so we're checking the alignment, and this is what I've ended up with. And you can see that it's out of a line. So I'm just going to pop my finger as best I can over over the peg because it's a it says push fit connection, but it's quite loose for me. So I'm just going to hold it into position, and I'm just going to push that, and I'm just going to double check that that pipe is still in there; it hasn't fallen out, and. I can see that the screw holes line up. Okay. And I'm going to fit those with, I should have checked the screwdriver first. Um, there we go. Tash, I need to go back to the previous one. I might as well take these out. But I think these are going to be better. Right, there we go. Perfect. So, these are CM screws. The M standing for, if anybody wants to have a guess. And what do we do with M screws? I know. I'm just waiting to see if anyone in the... Uh... The problem we have is that there's a little bit of a delay, so I probably would have finished this part before anyone's actually able to have a have a guess yeah but the washing up liquid's a clue yep <laughs> i know day other daves are probably going i know i know i know yeah david bill's put metal oh yeah and dave's probably really proud of me because i've uh, remembered you know what? I did have the right head. Yes, so well, W L washing <laughs> liquid. Oh no! Right. Okay. I have just caught that pipe again. <laughs> it 
So I'm going to take the whole pipe off and I haven't got to worry so much. Okay, so this has come off again. So it gives me a chance to show you this again. So we hook the pipe into there and then we line this up. And this is really fiddly, actually. You're holding apart the popular screw in. And of course, that now we're going to hope that the screw does actually fit in the hole. Right. Okay, so that screw's been fit just enough to just enough to uh, grab, which now means I can take a little bit more time with this one, and I don't need to hold it with so much. So yeah, for I know some some people might be watching um, from us uh, South Africa, and obviously you're uh, not as far as we are. So in case you haven't already worked out. If a screw ends with an M, it's going to be going into metal. If it ends with P, it's going to be going into plastic. I think it tells us that in one of the magazines, but us being a clever lot, we did figure that out beforehand, didn't we? Yeah. Probably about an issue or two before. Right, okay, that's fine. That's now gone in. So find a nice safe place to hold it. And I'm just going to give these a few turns at a time. And that washing up liquid is absolutely invaluable here. There isn't a lot of space to work in. Yeah, I used it for the first time on my DeLorean build last week. And it was I absolutely that, yeah. amazing. Yeah. And I mean, I tr the... I've tried to be really objectionable. But I, you know, the more objectionable I am, the more it's coming up trumps. Yeah. And then what with the combination of the screwdriver and, yeah, just perfect. Right. Because this is, although it's a metal screw going into metal, there's still a little bit of plastic in between. So I've applied the same rule. Once it's in tight, that's fine. That's good enough. I don't want to risk over. You might possibly crack that plastic. Oh, do you know what, Dave? It's, I mean, I I looked at, I mean, there's still parts that I'm scared of. I'll be honest with you there. But um, it's, uh, yeah, it's looking good. Um, so I believe what they've given us in the magazine is a finished view. So that's what what it should look like at the moment. Obviously, mine hasn't got the pipe on now because um, I'm going to flick between the two screens. Um, so mine obviously hasn't got the pipe on at the moment because it's just snapped off. And they should be looking the same. I hope. Okay, so do you want to go on to the next bit? Yeah, that's good. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so stage seven. Okay, so take the feed pipe, 29P, and fit the six connectors into the sockets on the cylinder head. Three fit into part 26B and three into 26A. Then in big capital letters, it says, note, you will need tweezers to attach these connectors. Okay, I'm struggling with this. Um, sorry, I thought I was on your view. I do apologize. Right. So that's because I'm working on the wrong side. No, I'm not. Oh God, that angle is awful. Okay. I'm not getting this. Right. Okay, guys. So just study that picture for two, two, three seconds. Yeah, I see. I was just getting confused. Yeah. Which I, these are pointing out the wrong way. Maybe they are flexible. Okay. 
Let me. Uh, yeah, because actually, if you look at uh, image 7B, you can see that they come out of the rail and then fold back on themselves. Right. But... Okay, I'm not comfortable doing this. Right, okay, I'm going to need a moment to study because um, I can see ahead 7A, this bottom bit, they've got two lugs there and they go into there. So working backwards, that going into there, I'm pushing it in gently in case it doesn't work, but that's going to go into there, which means they need to go into... Ah, uh, okay, right. These are going to be folded 180 degrees. This little peg there is going to go into that little hole there. Right. And then so you've I... got two small screw holes there, one there and one there, and you can see that they line up there. So... The next question is... This pipe, oh, that's fine. That's not in the way yet. So that pipe can stay off. That's where the pipe will go if you fitted it and haven't broken it off. Right. Okie dokie. So what I'm going to do is they're going to go like that. Right. I'm going to fit this one first because you see I've got less room for manoeuvre. Um, so... Gonna take this off. See if I can put it in that way. Right, I don't know if this is gonna work. If I put the first one in and then bend the whole oh I see. Right, okay, I no that's not gonna work. Right. Oh, right, okay, I'm going to put the one in. I need something I can poke with. Tweezers? No, I'm struggling to poke with them. Right, there we go. Right, okay. There we go, back of my knife. I don't know if you can see what I'm doing there, but fill it a uh, flathead screwdriver. Right. Where can I find a flathead screwdriver? <laughs> right. There we go. Oh. That's not a flathead screwdriver. Um, sorry guys, bear with me. Right, okay. I'm going to use this because I like the point on it. So, I don't know if you can see, but I can't get that all the way in. So what I want to do is just push... I... Oh, I was lucky. Right, okay. So many fiddly parts. So I just want to push either side till it's in. Right, that's in. So if I now move this round, you can see that I've now got the first one in. But the rest I'm going to have to actually physically move. They're quite rubbery, but if you spin them too fast... I would imagine they'll snap. You know when you get a piece of plastic and you, you, you have to twist it and bend it? Yeah. So this might take a while, guys. And also this part, this bit's not going to go in. Right, that's in now. Right. 
So. So gently move that around. Oh, I, I may. Can I make a suggestion? Yeah. I think you should use the better quality tweezers that you've got in your set because they look useless. Ah, okay. Right. I've actually figured it. So, um, yeah, I've got a really good set. So let's use the really good set. Um, I want to try and use the cheaper ones because... Right. Which ones do I use? Right, okay. So I'm going to use these tweezers because they're quite long and they've got a lot large, larger ends and this is the way i've just figured out how to do it what we're going to do is we're going to take it see my hand in quite an awkward position right but i'm going to turn it so as i turn my hand now becomes in a natural position and i'm going to rest that peg in the hole just on the top of the hole and hopefully that'll stay in then i'm going to come around the back I'm going to get it either side, squeeze it fairly hard, and I'm going to push down. There we go. That's in. Okay. I'm not going to, probably not going to be able to take these out. So I'll try and get the next three done all from different angles. So this one, I'm going to try and do it from long range so you can see what my hand is doing. So I'm coming in quite an unnatural position. I want to turn my hand so it becomes like this. And then it becomes natural. Okay, so bring that up into position. So unnatural. Grab the black part. Gently turn it round. Okay, and I'm going to rest it on the hole. There. Then I'm going to come in from the back. I'm going to hold it with the tweezers on both sides. You can see there's a little tab. Um, I'll show you in more detail in a moment. But just above the tab on the sides, I'm going to squeeze and then I'm going to push. Okay. So if I now show you closer. Right. So my hand coming in. And I'm going to bend that round. Okay. And you can't see. This is the hole. I'm going to rest the locating peg onto the hole. And then can you see the little bits that come out either side of it? Bring the light in. I actually need the light for this one. I know the light's been getting in the way. Sorry, guys. Right. So, can you see tabs either side of it? Oh, yeah. And right, you can so see it on that remain. You can see it on the remaining pipe that's left out yeah. as well. So, what we're going to do is we're going to grab it from either side, just resting above those, those two tabs, and I'm going to push, apply pressure and push down because we're applying equal pressure either side it's going to go straight down there we go and it looks like it's going up oh we will sort that out okay that'll get sorted out okay so the last one Bending it, remember, keep it slow because if we do it quick, it's going to build the friction up. It could snap that tube. See, that one's not gone so rounded. Maybe that is actually a rubber tube in there. I don't know. And there we go. No, this one isn't wanting to play. Okay, that's perfect. That's gone in. Right. Oh, and this one's come out. So that suggests to me I haven't put it in properly in the first place. 
There we go. That one's quite a loose fit. Now that's gone in at an angle, but I'm su suggesting that because we've got these pe these bits there, it will sort itself out. Okay, I've not looked ahead on the instructions. Oh, that one was okay. difficult, but it was okay because I took it slow. All right. Okay. So 7A is saying that we need to put this full. That, that's just come across. I actually put those in at the beginning. If you want to do those last, but there was two pegs. There's one there and one there. If you can see them, you'll see that there's little round circles on the actual engine where they go into. Okay, now that's 7A, but say I did that right at the beginning. Yeah. And then 7B, let's have a look at the picture for 7B, and you can see what I'm seeing. So we've got, basically we're going to attach them with two tiny screws. Yeah, that's it. Fix okay. the pipe in place with two JM screws through the holes in 29P. Okay, so... JM screws are the ones that were read in a previous issue. And I'm going to try and bring this in close. So I think I can do it from this angle. So obviously I'm going to need to change my screwdriver head. Because these are very small. Um, oh, it's because I put it there. That's why I can't find it. Why have I got a fillet flathead? Okay, I think I've got my... Uh, nope. <laughs> yeah, it says no as well. Ensure the connections between the cylinder head and the feed pipe remain at right angles. Do not yeah. swivel as you fix the feed pipe in place. Do not swivel. How do you mean? That's all it says. It just says, do not swivel as you fix the feed pipe in place. Um, and then it says the correct position circled on the left is shown here. Uh, and then obviously you've got the diagram. Right. That's, that's really wanting to pop up. So that's going to be tough. So I'm going to need to put... I've actually just put uh, washing up liquid. I've just put a dab on the table. Right. So I'm going to do this one first because this is the one that's wanting to push up. And I think that once that's in place, it will um, it'll bring the other one down or help to bring the other one down. So I'm going to hold that in place just so that I, I get the screw holes lined up. And I should really have test fitted this first because it's not sure if it's going to go in. There we go. Got lucky there. Okay. So that's in just enough so it grabs. Whew. Is anyone now looking forward to this section? Yeah, 32. So I just said um, uh, they've just finished this stage. Uh, having problems with the prop shaft, we'd like to see how yours goes together. Uh, Lovely. Ben Don't says put the any inject on me whatsoever. No. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, the injector pipes are a nightmare. And then Is that these parts, yeah. Yeah, and then asking if we're live, and Dave said yes, we are. Yeah, we are most definitely live. Okay, that's going in fine. Okay. Now, on the real bus, would these pipes all line up evenly or would they just do their own thing like mine seems to be doing? Okay. I don't like those screws. They don't, they look like they're not in. Um, there. Well, they're, J they're JMs, yeah? Yep. 
trying to find them. Um, there. there you go. See, they look like they're sticking out. I'll try a smaller screwdriver head, which I haven't got. But I remember having trouble before when I put them in on the bonnet. Yeah, that is actually the smallest one I've got. Let's try this one. It's not any smaller, but it's got a longer head. Oh, okay. I'll take all that back. I mean, this has been functional for, for a while. I'm just trying to make it look nicer. <laughs> yeah, Teddy Collins just said can't be as bad as the dash wiring on the DeLorean. I completely agree with you on that one. It was an absolute nightmare. <laughs> Sorry guys, I know I'm doing this off camera, but I can't I can't do it on camera. I, I struggled with these ones before. I a lot of them I stripped the strip the uh, the colour off. That's the best I'm going to be able to do, guys. They look really scruffy, but they're in. They don't totally destroy the build, I don't think. But they're not as neat as they can be. I look forward to when you do this. Um, because, although my AEC badges are nice, and I'm really happy with that. But, um, yeah, I think that's okay. But they, see, these have gone at a slight angle, but I suppose that's what they would do in real life. Yeah, I think that's about right. Sometimes in cars, okay. it's similar. In, although in a car, it's poor sometimes. Yeah. Not most of the time. Ooh, okay. I don't mind admitting that was hard work. So, that was the second page of nine. <laughs> yeah. And there's more fiddly stuff to come. There's more. Yeah, but you've got this eventually. Eventually, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so. Stage eight. Take the link. Stage eight. Take the link 29D and fit the two pegs into the sockets and the cylinder head. One part in 26A, one in 26B. Uh, okay. It's a push fit connection. Okay, we've got we've got an easy part then. Okay, so I can straight away see that we've got two holes there. And all I'm gonna do is pop this into there and I'm just gonna locate them first. You might find it a bit easier to use a screwdriver, uh tweezers. Okay. Now these pegs I think there we go there we go that just popped straight into there and I'm gonna be honest with you I don't like that I do not like that let me explain why I don't know if I'm gonna there we go right on this side you've got the little press mark where it's come out of the mold now you're probably not gonna see it but this side has got more open and this is a little bit more enclosed. So what I want to do is put that, I mean, this is just being a little bit OCD, but that little circle there, I want to put it on this side because then it's easier to hide. And I might, well, I'm here, I might as well try it with the tweezers. And there we go. So you see there from that side, you can't see it. And that side, you know where it is, but it's 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 hidden a little bit better. Yeah. Alternatively, you could just scrape that down and repaint it, but I really don't want to do that. Okay, right. so I'm so, having a mouthful of coffee because I've just seen what's coming. Yeah. Oh God, I need to delete. You just file. Do delete. Yeah. <laughs> and you moaned at me for accidentally deleting a file once. <laughs> oh dear. 
<laughs> okay, right. Uh, so first of all, before we go anywhere, it says pass 29J to 29O are delicate. Handle them with care. Note that the longest parts, O and J, are furthest away from part 25D, while 29M and 29L, towards the middle, are the shortest. So. Oh. Okay, I'm confused. So basically, the pipes are longer on the outer edges and they get shorter as they come towards the middle. Yeah, that's not why I'm confused. Right. Okay. Can you blow up the engine part in the bottom left? Right. So you see, we've got only three pipes going into that side. Oh, I see. Okay, no, no, my bad, my bad. Right. Um, it, if you come out, you just uh, reduce it so you can get the whole instruction in. The, the way that I read that was that three goes on one side and three goes on the other. So if you look on the bottom engine on the left, you see there's three pipes already in there. And I'm like, well, where have they come from? In actual fact, we're working on the same side on both. So that's that's where those three pipes have come from. Did any of that make sense? Yeah, yeah, I get that. Uh, 32 right. soldiers said uh, they know what is coming and be careful not to break them. They're really brittle. Okay, so um, I'm guessing tweezers are needed. So what I'll do is I'll attempt this with you all laughing at me. So I'm going to start from O because that looks like there's less room to work with. So I think that might be the harder one. Ah, now Teddy's come up with a good idea. Uh, it says What's the pipes, that? the pipes soften with warm water. I like the tires. Oh, of course. Okay, let's give it a. Yeah, you're right there. You really are right. So I've just give that a dry fit into there. And you know, I, I'm going to have to change my glasses because I can't see anything. I've got my driving glasses on, not my reading glasses. If anyone ever watches any of my Twitch channels, I do this every day, just about. Oh, I've got the wrong glasses on. Right. So. That's going to go in there, no problems. And that's going to go in, no problems. And I think I've just figured this out. So look at that. Look at that. I assume you need to now remove the uh, label on the pipe before fitting. Yeah. or do... Yeah. That I don't know if it's the size of my holes, but the reason I kept the pipe in is because I think it was going to. Right. So what I've done is I've put the bottom hole in first and that will enable me to swivel it into place. And look, I'm actually accidentally using the Rootmaster tweezers. Right, can you see? Yeah. Right, so don't think about the position you're in. Think about the position you're going to end up with. I'll explain that in a moment. And for some reason, this one's difficult the second time around. No, that's because it's already in. So that went straight in. Right. So what I did, because the pipe was there, I want to end up in that position. So I've picked it up there so that as I move around, I'm into a comfortable position. Does that make sense? Yeah. And there's a little bit no, of discussion going on. Apparently, they, don't, they won't stay in until he says a drop of glue. Right, that's what I was thinking. Because they're very, very loose. They've gone in very easily. Okay, so would you like me to glue these in? Yeah, I think I'm you should. Ask, I'm asking the audience. Um, I suspect they'll say yes. Okay, so what I'm noticing with these, there's a little curve at the bottom and there's a big curve at the top, like practically 90 degrees and it's that big curve needs to be at the top 
Right. So. Yeah, they're actually going in for me with relative ease. So you see there it spun round to, to the wrong side. So I'll just give that a rotation gently. If there's any resistance, then I'll stop. And this is going to be a lot easier because I've worked in the corner first. Right. Yeah. So I'm going to go out on a limb here and say this is easy, but take your time. All right. So next is 29M. Do you think we'll have more of these in that, that later stage? These come off really easy. Just slide them down. Right. Okay. Glue them in. Try dry fit first. Okay. Right. So regardless of whether I would glue them or not, I think you're better putting them in first. And then what, what we will need is a cocktail stick and some runny super glue, such as what you get from Poundland. If there's anyone from outside of the UK, what I mean by Poundland is a dollar store, cheap store, anything like that. Okay. So I've had no, not too much problem there, but also I'm keeping this upright. I'm using gravity. If I now turn this towards me so that this face is down, I'm going to suspect that they will, they will uh, fall out. Okay. So that's the first half of stage nine done and they're looking nice. Um, I'm a little bit concerned about that hole there. Uh, there it is, that hole back there. Are we now going to cover that hole up and then knead it? Right, mm -hmm. so... So again, I'm going to carry on working. The further away that I'm working, the easier it seems to be coming. So less, um, some of you might go, well, I'll work, I'll do the easy ones first. Um, oh, this is a little bit, there we go. Um, some of you might want to do the easy ones first. I personally like to get the hard ones over and done with. Um, because by doing the, the easy ones first, you may actually make the harder ones even harder. Okay, so it is just a case of take it slowly. Whoops. That moved that into position it didn't really want to move into. So I am liking the warm water trick as well. Um, I'm not using warm water because I, I managed, but that would certainly make them a little bit more flexible. Okay. So 29K. I mean, it might well be that I've got a part that just goes in easily. So, um, right, I'm going to move that to roughly the position it's going to be in when I'm finished. And remember, the the further down it you hold it, the easier it is to work with. But if you hold it too far down, you're not going to leave enough space for the hole. Whoops. Okay, straight in there. But yes, there is there is a lot of movement in there, so they are not going to stay in on their own. So I'm holding, let's see there, I've got a little bit left, but I've got this as close as I can. Because if I'm trying to maneuver in like this, see I've got so much movement. But if I hold it there, I've got much tighter control. Okay. Oops. And I've just accidentally pulled one out, which is another reason why I didn't want to glue it in first. Okay, so we'll just put that pipe back where, where it came from. Okay, and take that as close to the top as I dare. And just push that in. Maybe I should have been a surgeon. 
There we go. That's in. Right. Okay. So, what you need now is... Uh, bear with me a sec. I wasn't expecting to use these, so obviously I'm not, I'm not ready. Um, so, a couple of cocktail sticks. That gives me a spare in case things goes wrong. And let's take the box that we got from this. And then what I'm going to do is on oh, there's my super glue now this came from pound land it's it's the runny stuff um and what i'm gonna do rather than try and put, pour that glue onto there i'm gonna pour a little bit of glue as much as you want onto the plastic okay and then what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna get the end of the cocktail stick i'm gonna just touch the end of the super glue and i'm gonna get into the junction there and i'm just going to put one drop in there that's all i've put in okay and i'm going to wait okay because at this point i don't know if this is going to work so there's no point putting loads of work in to discover it's no good so and the less put the less i can't explain this i can't explain why it works but the less glue you put in the better it seems to be Okay, so having given that a minute or two, actually, you might as well use this other cocktail stick. That's stuck. That is stuck. Okay, and you see, you can't see it. I've kept control of it with the, with the uh, cocktail stick. And that's just made life so much easier. So now that I know that works, I don't know if you can see, but look, literally the end of the cocktail, so all the glue I'm using. Okay. No, don't go shoving nozzles in there. Yeah, end of a pipe. Yeah, you could do that. But if you put glue onto the pipe and you, say, for example, you touch the outside of the hole and the glue sets, you can't get it off. All I've done is, there you go, one tiny drop. That's all I've done. And put it underneath the pipe so it's not visible. Okay? You don't need to glue it in so that so that Hulk Hogan can't remove it. You need to just glue it in so that gravity can't pull it out. Okay. I'll give that a moment. That one's stuck fast. That one's stuck fast. The more glue you put on this, the longer it will take to dry. Okay. And with a gentle pull, I can't remove them. Now you need to decide, do you want to glue the bottoms in? Um, I suspect you probably wouldn't need to. But if you want to, that's fine. This is going to be a little bit more tricky because I want to come in from behind. And the reason I'm going in behind is if I accidentally put more than a drop on, it's not going to be seen. And just put the glue wherever you're comfortable. I'm probably rushing this, but really take your time. I find that the longer a build takes, the more I've enjoyed it, the more effort I've had to put in. Okay. Okay, so step 10, remove the lines you've just glued. Hang on, I'm just going to do... <laughs> I'm not going to lift that up, but that's my little confidence test. Okay. Thank you, Love Minis. I appreciate that, that comment. Yeah, um, I'm suggesting because you've glued the tops in, and obviously you've glued underneath so that I mean I cannot see any glue whatsoever. Um because I've used such a tiny amount. And also because it's runny glue, um, if you've got two surfaces like that, you see there's a little gap between my my fingers. No, you can't see it anymore. Well, I can't we really see it anymore? Got it right. 
Okay, this is exaggerated, but there's a little gap between my fingers. If you put glue in there, it's going to run straight through. If you put something like gel glue, it's going to stay wherever it touches. Okay, in, in miniature painting, we often will use super glue to, um, to fill gaps because it will go in, it will run into that gap. And that's kind of where I got the idea. So the glue, a little tiny bit of that glue will run down the pipe. And so it's, it's actually glued all the way down. What's that stop at Horlix? What are you up to? I, I, I think it went over your heads, but I said, right, step 10, remove the pipes. You just glued in. Okay, then. <laughs> As a joke. What you mean like part... Part 28, remove all those screws from the suspension that you spent hours putting in. Well, yeah. But no, just seeing all that tricky gluing, I thought, oh, it'd be funny to say that you need to remove them again. Do you know what? I'm sorry. I was so in the zone. I missed it. Well, you know what I'm like on Twitch. How many times do people have to say, Penny, we're talking to you? Oh, right. Okay. Did I pass that stage with flying colours or did I just pass? Yeah, I think that was... Uh... And all of this equipment is so super cheap. Um, is it 10 tubes of glue from Poundland for a pound? And the cocktail sticks, I think I picked them up for 50p for a tub. <laughs> so, um, yeah. It's that's, interesting because the, the glue I've bought from Poundland, um, is, they changed the brand, but mine's DIY time, and it's got like a really thin tube yeah flexible tube i i really like those because you've got that precision tube yeah. but i'm suggesting that in this particular case um you don't want that tube this is why if you noticed i poured i poured the glue on onto a piece of plastic and why not use the plastic that these parts came in so it gives you something to work from um when you've done miniature painting, do you notice that we put the paint onto something rather than using it straight out of the tub? Because mm -hmm. it gives us more control. Okay, the moment you let the glue take over. Um, I mean, you can you can go out and use your expensive glues, but use a runny glue because the runny glue will then run down. In fact, let me let me show you what's going to happen. Um, see if I've got a bit of waste plastic. I'll have to use a cocktail stick because I haven't got any plastic. But I don't know if I'll... Let's move that out of the way because you know I'm very accident prone. Right. So, basically... I don't know if you can see this. As I pour the glue onto the cocktail stick, you see it runs straight down. Yeah. No, that's the sort of glue that you want. So we actually want to glue there. We're applying the glue there and it's just running down like water. For a lot of jobs, this super glue is completely useless because it's so thin and runny. But for this job, it's absolutely perfect. Okay, I think we've... Uh... What's that? Uh... Dave Say said expertly done. Fleetwood J says, bloody hell, a pot of Valium needed, I think. Looking amazing. Excellent tip on the glue and cocktail stick. Thank you. It's funny that I've done that many different hobbies and, and it's quite a few transferable skills. So are we yeah. doing some fun bits next, Horlix? I think so. We're going to be putting the tap on. Okie dokie. So if you'd like to uh, give us the description. Yeah, so fit the tap 29U to the steering fluid reservoir 25H. The peg on the flange on the tap fits into the socket and then fix in place with a DP screw through the hole in the flange. Lovely. Just really handy, actually, because while you read it, it means I can get the parts ready. So what's going to happen, we've got this part that we fitted many weeks ago. And we've got two holes, one slightly bigger than the other one. Okay, and this is on the pipe side. And then on this tap, we've got a screw hole and we've got a locate peg. 
and you know how this is going to go. Um, we're going to pop the locating peg in. And then that's going to leave up, us enough space to pop a DP screw in. Now, P stands for anybody. And that looks like rather a large screw. In fact, I'm going to do this a different way. First of all, I'm going to change the screw head to a bigger one. Because I'm having trouble controlling the part we're going to screw on and the screw. So I'm... See, I even control... There you go. Plastic, plastic! So, see, I like to quiz you. So I'm going to pop the screw in. And then I'm going to line it up. And that way we've got the screw all ready and I still can't keep control of it. Okay. I think that's where you may be finding it easier to extend the screwdriver, Penny. Oh, you just want me to show off this brilliant screwdriver, don't you? Because then the handle won't get in the way of those delicate pipes. Oh, look. To be honest with you, you don't need a screwdriver with force. Okay, so... Because this is a loose part, I'm going to screw very gently. And I'm always going to check that that locating peg is still there. Okay. And that, with one tiny piece added, that just happens to have a bit of red on it, that is now suddenly looking awesome. That is brilliant. I'm sorry, I'm loving that. I don't get excited. Over, well, I do get excited over this, don't I? Inside, I'm jumping up and down going, it's brilliant, it's brilliant, it's brilliant. Mm. Okay. Okay, so the next bit of step 10 is to fit the uh, fit the eyelet in the instruction plate 29T over the peg on the bottom of the tap. Okay, so that will be, remember this too. The Do you know what? One. The I, I bought these. These are actually worse than useless. They're not even good enough to be called Chineseium. Right. Okay. So there's our fuel tap, and I will get a um, a close up of this again. So that's going to go on like. Oh, God. Right. Okay, so hold it at the top, but be careful. You don't want to scratch it. Okay, and I'm going to come in from above above the tap. Is that, that, is, is that a push fit, or are we going to screw? Oh, we're going to have a little knob to go on there, are we? Uh, I assume so. Okay, we're going to have a slight struggle here because the peg is just... Ever so slightly larger than the hole. I don't want to force it because we've got small parts. Right, okay, I'm convinced that's not going to fit. I'm just going to have a little look ahead. Okay, yep, yeah, that's fine. Right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my knife again. And I'm just going to give it a couple of gentle scrapes. Not all round because it is just ever so slightly bigger than the hole. So I'm just going to scratch it in a few places. And I'll see if that works. Now I'm having to come in at an angle. Uh, there we go. Right. The, the screw that we've just come in, uh, put in, is actually getting in the way of bringing it straight on. So I've got to come in at an angle, push it into the corner, and then put the locating peg over it is fiddly sorry guys it is fiddly uh, i see 32 soldiers said um they put 29t on first as he as they struggled to uh they struggled to get it on say that again sorry they've put on that plate you're putting on now uh yeah he, or, sorry i don't actually know if you're he or she 32 so um uh they put the that on before they screwed the uh the tap on they found it easier okay 
Ah, do you know what? I think you're dead right there. That is a really good. Okay, right. Yeah, I'm going to go with that, and I can see exactly what they're saying, because. Thank you so much. That is, yeah, I can see how that's going to be brilliant. So, I'll just put put the screw down, because then that will give us a little bit more space to manoeuvre in. Obviously, bear in mind that we want to keep this this peg there to this is how we're going to look at it because we don't want to put the the, the uh, plate on the wrong side and that's going to go in a lot easier now look so i've got all this room to work with but that peg is still too big so i'm going to give it another little gentle scrape not much and that's just to remove like what a hundredth of a mil tenth of a mil i want it to be a tight fit that's starting to want to go now So if you can't see this too well, I'm kind of in the zone now. Okay. Probably want to scrape it a little bit more. There you go. That's gone on. So now I'm hoping and praying that I have put this on the right side. Oh, sorry, on the correct side. Change the focus there. Okay. Actually, we can get that. We can get that focal point in there now. You see, you've got the fuel cap on and off. Okay. So now we can pop that on. Yeah, that is so much easier to get on, look. Thank you, Sol. That's brilliant. And this is why we do group builds, so that we can share information. For some reason, I can't find the hole. Can't find the screw hole. There we go. Oh, yeah. I just remembered Horlick shouting, extend it. <laughs> yeah, well, that's what it's for. Sorry, I'm in a very singy mood for some reason. See, now I thought the extension was for when you were working on someone's mobile phone and they've dropped something on it that you don't like the smell of. So you can extend it so that you can work further away from it. Yeah, you could could use it for that. Sorry, guys, I'm going to have to work like this because I can't hold it near the camera and position it. There we go. Again, be be gentle. Give that about a quarter of a turn. There's a lot of parts that are on just by tiny bits. So they are going to wobble a lot. I'm, I'm absolutely loving this. Right. So if, this, if we're going into this much detail for the parts that we won't see on a day-to-day -day basis, what we, what's it going to look like on the bits that are? Right. So uh, stage 11 sounds like you're eating some sweets there. Do you want a moment? No, I'm all right. <laughs> Sorry, I've got so familiar with Horlicks now that we just take the Mickey out of each other. Yeah, well, I, I had such a good, I had such a good haul from the arcade the other day. I just fancied a, a nibble. Is that all? Yeah, I will just fill you in, guys. Horlicks was sending me pictures over Facebook, just of sweets, no explanation, nothing. Just here's some sweets, and I'm like, <laughs> okay, I'm having a bit of a tough time right now when you're sending me pictures of sweets. Actually, um, the reason I sent you the picture in the first place was uh, because of the yums. Because I, I noticed on stream the other day you were eating a packet of yums, and I, I came out and thought, "Oh wow, 
That's, I'm sure that's what you had the other day. There's Penny Sweet. I must copy her. No. <laughs> okay, okay, sorry. So we are, we'll do. We'll put some interlude music on, shall we? Dun, 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 <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Right. Okay. Intermission. Sorry. Right. So this looks like it's going to be really fiddly. Um, so we're going to fit the fuel gauge pipe twenty nine Q to the upper. Uh, the upper end fits through the hole in the instruction plate, and then the lower end fits into the cap of the fuel filter from the back. No, take near, uh, care not to disturb the other lines. I quit. What the hell? Oh, God. I've just seen it now. Right, okay, yeah. so this top bit there with a the little knobbly bit on the top, that's going to go into there. Not a problem, but the, this bit, it's got a hook round and go in the back there. So fiddly, you can't even see it. Let's see if I can point to it. Right. Where the tip of my knife is, that's where it's got to go. So I'm going to suggest that we start from the back. And we're going to need tweezers for this as well. Okay, I can't. There's so many pipes in there, I can't work it. There we are. Right, so. Yeah, okay. We're going to, I'm going to have to do that with tweezers. So. Sorry, guys. I'm going to... Oh, no. I might be all right. Right. So. Yeah, I really need 14 hands for this. Right. So, that's... It's really hard to work. Try and work to the camera. I'm trying to support this with my fingers and all sorts. Right. So... Just trying to push that in with the tweezers that don't actually have much grip. So I'm going, oh, there you go. Shall I use my professional tweezers? Why not? I paid enough money for them. Okay, that's may not be in fully, but that's in enough. And then we'll pop the other end in to there. Right, that is not in really tight, but it's in more than I dared push. Because it's just... So, I would suggest that there's enough room there for me to put a dab of super glue in. Which, can you see how loose that is? Yeah, you only want one tiny knock, and that's coming out. So, look, guys, I'm going to just put a dab of glue in there. And we'll, you can see now if that's going to, if I'm going to cock it up. So, same as before, bit of super glue on the plastic. I put way too much on there, but that's fine. And, in fact, I'm going to rub a little bit of that glue off. And I think I've just glued my fingers together. Right, that's great. That's great. I'm happy with that. Okay, it's still loose. Still got a wobble on. It's not that bad, Penny, surely. There we go. Yeah, look. It's magic now. Look, see how I can pick up cocktail sticks without actually grabbing them? Do you know, everyone at work is used to me going to work with um, super glue all over my hands. Because the thing is, if you get super glues over your pads or your fingers, 
you can't operate your, your mobile phone because my mobile's got a fingerprint thingy on the back. Of course, I go switch my phone on. I can't switch it on because it don't recognise my fingertips because it's full of super glue. <laughs> so um, yeah, look, that's that is still wobbly, and if you go to pull it, it will fall off. But it's not going to fall off by itself. This is the problem with um, with scale, one uh, one to one scale. That's in fact, that's probably still quite fragile, even one to one scale. You now reduce that down to one to twelve scale, and you're talking about a really fiddly bit of plastic there. Okay, are we happy with that? Yeah, that looks really good. And we're still only on page five. Yeah. Oh my goodness me. Okay. <laughs> Hmm. You've got this to come, Horlicks. I know. Have you seen this? Right. 12. Fit the fuel line, 29R. One end fits into the back of the tap, circled in uh, in the inset above. Yep. And the other end fits into the injection pump, 25D, in the centre hole. Here's the push bit. You're having a laugh, aren't you? So you've got to get to that hole at the bottom you were talking about and behind the tap. Oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah, no, not like... Oh, oh, hang on. That's not as bad, is it? Okay, right. Okay, I've just dry-fitted it off camera. Now I've got to pull it all out so I can show you how to do it. Right, so this is the hole that I showed concern about earlier on. That hole there... And then we're going in behind the pipe. Now, the question I've got, do these, does this go in front of those pipes like that? Or should it tuck? So I've just lost this. Or should it tuck behind that pipe? Yeah, I've just does looked. not make a difference? I've just skipped forward and it looks like, I've skipped forward to the next page. It does look like it goes behind that pipe. So they don't just want to make hard, they want to make it really hard. Can we have a look at stage 13? And or 16, which are both on the same page. And then we can make an informed choice. Well, so I think that's 13. hard to see because of the quality of the. But that looks like it to me. That looks like it's in front of. I think it's behind. Stage... It looks behind on. Thirteen. To me, and then if I move over to fourteen, that also looks like it sweeps behind. Okay. Right. Okay, if we want to up the game and put it behind, then we shall have it behind. So then souls is in front. You could just fit it and see where it naturally wants to sit and just see if it Yeah. Yeah, okay, well uh, let's have a look. Let's um let's go whoops. Let's go for behind. Fiddly, but okay. So, thirty-two soul has just said that his is in front, and Dave Milne says it looks like it's in front. Um, I mean, I have to be honest; I have to disagree. Looking at the pictures, but I think just fit See, it, I, dry fit it both I ways. I think if it goes behind, they probably would have told us to put that pipe in afterwards. Um, it won't work, right? Okay, fine. Um, let, listen, right? I'm not like trying to prove other people wrong and stuff, but I'll give it one more go. And if it doesn't work after this, 
because it 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 oh 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 do you know what it's getting this this bottom bit in but i i i'm sure i mean the root master seems to be a well thought out build and I would have imagined that if they wanted it behind, they would have told us to put that pipe in after. Because the next stage I've noticed is a pipe that's going in front of it. Uh, so Stuart's just uh, said he thinks it's behind. So you've got two for behind. I no think it can go. Because... Oh, yeah, look, that's going to go. See, now I'm in a dilemma. Right, I'm going to have to put this down and use two sets of tweezers. I need to kind of pull a bit out and put a bit in. Right, there you go. That's gone straight in. And I've got to be honest with you, I like the look of that. So, looking at that yourself, what would the would it cause any issues if it was in front? Can you see any? Right, if it went in front, it's going to push down on that pipe. Right, that's what I thought. But. I've got to be honest with you, looking at... The, oh, hang on. Let me have a... Yeah, look. look. I don't know if you can see that. That definitely goes behind, doesn't it? Yeah, that's, that's the image I was looking at. That's... So now I'm wondering... 32 Solar says it hasn't worked because he tried... But I'd like to know how it went in. 32 Sol, would you do me a favour and would you take a, a picture of yours? And then we'll have a look at it next week. We're not. I'm not going to be out to say, oh, this is not how you do it. But I'm quite intrigued as to, I'm looking at it now and I'm thinking, I don't know how we would have got that in front. But I think that it would have been better if we'd left that pipe off. This um, bum, 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 29, 29M for Mike. I think if we'd left that pipe off and put it in now, I think that would have been a lot easier. Because that's, that's seriously got in the way. But you can see, look, if we'd have taken that pipe off, it would have been, we'd have had all that space. So if anyone's watching this after, don't put this in. Don't put it in at stage nine. Put it in at stage... I can't remember what stage we're up to. We're on 12, so at the end of stage 12. That's why I can't find it because I'm on the wrong page. So don't put that in in stage six. Put it in at stage 12 is my recommendation. Yeah, I, I think looking at the picture... At stage 13, I think it's not really showing up on the camera as much, but it's looking to me like it is going across, uh, under. Yeah, Stuart said uh, the reason uh, he, he thinks it's behind is because the hole is behind the pipes as well. Yeah. But that's the first thing I looked at. and But yeah, I think it doesn't matter, does it, at the end of the day? Everyone's the thing is, that one, that one's gone in push fit, no problem. So if it goes in push fit... Oh, I thought that went in too well. It hasn't, that, that pipe at the back hasn't quite gone in the hole. So I think we need something really thin for that. Like um, another cocktail stick. It's um, really difficult. Oh, I can't. Where did I just get cocktail sticks from then? You know, I just lost. Well, I have to use this one. I has got glue on it. I'll use my knife. Right. So I can't really. Sh I don't know if you can see that. 
It hasn't quite gone in the hole, so I'm going to have to try and lift that a little bit. Well, actually, I might be able to do it with my tweezers. If you if it's too fiddly, it's probably not going to be spotted. But it's one of those things you know. Okay, okay, I can't get it in. Right, okay, it's it's kind of hovering over the hole. But yeah, okay. Right, should we go on to the next stage? <laughs> yes. It's quarter to ten and we haven't finished the build yet. <laughs> Mad. Okay. Oh dear. Okay, so more pipe work. Take the line 29S, fit one end into the hole in the feed pipe 29P, and fit the lower bent end into the socket on the top of the cap 25G. Okay, so this is the fiddliest pipe that we have. It's tiny, brittle. And I can't, bro, this is, yeah, I did see a big red circle somewhere. Yeah, delicate parts, take your time. Um, yeah, honestly, that's that couldn't have been more, uh, couldn't have been better advice. Right, so, ah, so it's going to go into that hole, is it? Into the top of. I've just lost it. There uh... it is. To the left. It's one of these. Right. Ah. God, they hate us, don't they? Right. So this bit's going to go into it. There's a little, like a, a bottle thing. You see the hole there just underneath the fuel? There we are. So that's going to go into there. And that's a nice fit. Oh, well, that's actually very easy. Look, so get the bottom bit in, and then you'll probably be able to manage this with the supplied tweezers. Um, there you go, that's gone in easy. I will just backtrack a little bit with the um, with the harsh tweezers. What I've done is I've ever so slightly bent them inwards. You see there that there is that hole in the middle. So when you push, it puts a little bit more pressure on the end. And I found that's really helpful then because I couldn't pick anything up with them. Um, I'm, I'm not going to glue these because this seems to go in fine. I don't think that's going to fall out. But if you do want to glue them in, that, that, that next pipe exactly the same as I did with the cocktail stick you've got plenty of room underneath there and a little dab there and you won't even spot that glue okay brilliant okay uh, so step 14 I think these issues are going to get long oh do you know what Whoa. okay so let's have a well yeah I mean I keep here. joking I think we're going to be sitting here sewing the seats up for the bus we're going to be here with our little with sewing kits. Oh, no, please don't. No. We'll be doing cross stitch and that. We'll be cross stitching the patterns on all the seats. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what? If if you write, I'm just going to go, no, that's it. No <laughs> end of series, that's it. It's all over. <laughs> okay. Right, yeah. Uh, step 14. So you need to take the instruction plate. So is what we the last one you got left. Um, check the fit over the top corner of the coolant tank, and then fix in place with the GP screw. Okay, this is actually one of the easy parts. Right, so it's fiddly but easy. So what we're going to do is we're going to get the plate, and I'm holding it like that. So the hole is on the inside. 
because the hole we're aiming for is there. Uh, there we go. See the hole there just next to my finger? And I'm just going to slide that across like that. If you want a little bit more grip, uh, you're not going to get it. Right, there you go. So that's that's going to fit. We can see that. Okay, sorry. It's really hard to get the camera angle and a working angle. Okay, so... I'm going to balance that over there in case it falls off. And we want a GP screw, which is our never before used screw. Look. And I suspect I'm going to need a smaller head. It looks like it's got quite a long thread on there, considering what it's holding. Yeah. It's going to go in a long way, isn't it? Okay. So P stands for. Tell you, it could be true about the seats. After all, the E-type um, Jag, after after the E-type E-type Jag has proper leather seats. Yeah. Although I'm currently sourcing, oh, I'm currently sourcing out leather for my Newport bus. Um, there's a girl I work with. She does dolls' houses, and. Uh, She's finding me a few links for, like, people who are, like, apparently proper into dolls' houses. They make all the furniture and everything. So um, I'm going to struggle with this. Right, I'll tell you what, let's do it the easy way, shall we? Let's put the screw in first. Right. I'm going to bring this down. I can't see a thing now, but it's just the hard oh, look. What happens when your screwdriver is too magnetic? Yeah, the hard bit is just getting the screw started. Once it's started, it's fine. Gentle, gentle. Just use the weight of the screwdriver. And then wait till I get a grab. There we go. Okay, so you see, I've grabbed it, it's, it's got a grab. Okay, so that was going well for about a second. So we're about I'll halfway through it. now, aren't we? Well, just over halfway. What, this, this? About there, the build. Not the entire build. No, no. I mean, this this issue. Yeah. Because it says we're fitting the engine and everything. We haven't even got it. We're still building yeah. the engine at the In moment. In all fairness, we've um, we, we've timed this issue perfectly because we don't have a guest sitting there waiting and going, "Come on, hurry up, Penny! I want to talk about my my bit." And in all fairness, I haven't got a lot of news for you. So it's going to be build it and then finish. Right, I'm sorry if I'm covering all of this up, but I really am struggling to get this screw started. You can tell when I'm struggling because I kind of pant. Right, there we go. That's starting to go in now. So I've got the bite. That I need. I'm, just gonna, I'm gonna have to bring the light down a bit more so that I can see a bit better. Right. Trying to hold the little sign in place 
although it will pull it into place as we screw you know what i'm i'm doing a 14 different screwdriver heads as i go i can't find these tiny screws it's like there is no screwdriver bit in the world that seems to be a perfect fit although that one is doing a good job and don't forget you've got the really really micro one on in the top uh that's for made for the iphone oh thank you i think that might be our winner we what we, it's not so much thin or or that we need um we need like a long head to sort of get in, into the middle not that's actually completely useless is it yeah but you know it's worth trying isn't it i don't think this one's going to work but this is a really fat one do you know what that is our one i'm just being careful because i'm not 100 percent sure if i've screwed this in i might have got it in at a slight angle all right Of, of all this build, I'm having most trouble with this one screw. So G must mean grown because we've got that horrible screw again. Sorry, can you see all right? I haven't changed the focus again. That's better, isn't it? The problem I'm having is it's trying to rotate that plate. So I'm having to just do a couple of turns and then check the plate. Right, I think that that is as good as we're going to get. And that is another one of those nice touches. Um, and if anyone has managed to read that, I haven't got magnifying glass. So I think we're definitely going to need, need a magnifying glass for that, aren't we? I managed to read it earlier, but through the screen, uh, my eyes right. are pretty good. But... Okay, let's... Uh, warning pressure cap. No, I really can't. It's far too small. Can you use the glasses you've got now? Can you then not use your driving glasses as like a magnifying glass? You know what? Well, you guys come up with some really good ideas, actually, don't you? You know, now I can't see anything, look. Well, I didn't, I, I didn't quite mean like that, Penny. I meant hold the, your other glasses no, on top of I can. I can't see anything in front of me, but I can see things 15 miles away now. It says, if you can read this, you are superhuman. No, I, I, I can't read it. Um, so answers on a postcode. <laughs> we'll, we will find out what that says. That Bring will be up. everyone's challenge. Oh, hang on. That's my alarm going off. It's time to take the bins out. I set an alarm for what should theoretically be after the show because it's bin day to, to tomorrow for us. So, uh, right. Okay. So are you happy with that? And shall we look at the next stage? Yes, okay, so 15. Um, okay, fit one end of the line, 29i, over the peg on the side of the cap, 29e. Right, okay. So... Oh, that's interesting. Okay. I'll just spot right. something. 
So we've got this is the cap, and it looks to me like if you look down the engine like that, it's going to be on your right hand side. Um, now I'm going to take a leaf out of um, uh, 32 Soul's earlier suggestion, and I'm going to fit the pipe first like that because it doesn't look like this end is attached to anything yet and it's obviously if we try and fit that and then we try and put the pipe on that's going to be a nightmare isn't it is that a breather pipe i think would it, anyone know no i think that's actually that's to do with the radiator i think that's the header yeah. tank so that'll be a water pipe it's like the um that's it's the expansion so obviously if the temp, if the if you put too much water in a radiator yeah. and it starts blowing the water up that's the escape pipe so it so actually that's... in a lot of vehicles that might even not be connected to anything that would just that's what hang, i'm thinking i'm sure my last car had a pipe that went down the side of the engine and, just... and it sort of sat about, about a foot off the ground yeah. so if there was too much water in there it'll just come out of the pipe but that's um that's the same as in your sink you've got you put your plug in if the water level rises you've got like a little hole further up that's that's that principle isn't it so the only thing I, the thing i've noticed is with that in place it now hides that detail a little bit mm, yeah true Which, of course, means if you show the bus to anyone, everyone's going to go, oh, what's that say? Oh, no, I've just broken all your pipes off. Penny. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. And then off they go. While you're waiting yeah, for the no AI. Problems. No problems. Right, okay. okay. So, do you want to have a look at the next stage? Yeah, okay. So, 16. Take the exhaust manifold, 25p. So, that's from uh, issue 25. Okay. So, and you already speculated this in when we did this issue, actually. Anyway, yeah, um, there was someone on Facebook that actually put this in the week it came out, and I'm like, mm, "You've made life hard." For... Oh, I really don't don't like that. That's so loose, but it's not. Is that coming out? Come out? Yeah, Is it? I'm putting enough glue in. Would it be better to te pull that out, put the cocktail stick in the hole with the glue on, and then push it back in? Might be, actually. You know me, though. I like to do things difficult. Well, it's probably best to do it now, because it'll get too buried otherwise, won't it? I missed and hit the plate. That's what, that's what I was worried about. I can't didn't go in the hole first time okay okay that that will that will um that will stick right so this pipe is going to be pointing downwards and then all we're going to do is just gently position it in there's only three locating pegs this third one there doesn't have a peg just make sure you're not catching any of the tubes and that doesn't want to go in so we're going to have to find something to push it with don't push in the middle so all you're going to do is snap it in the middle push where there's a pin where there's a part coming out oh do you know what that just went in easily so push it like there 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 probably don't want to push in there but don't push there it might not break but they're going to be your stronger points okay i notice that's a different color is that on purpose mm, possibly i mean i suppose on the real bus i see that i get hot and then it would it would change color yeah i i, I mean it, obviously out the factory it'll come out whatever uh, don't have an expansion tank. It flows onto floor, mainly pressure relief. Right, okay, that might be the easiest stage we've done so far. Um, okay, so 
on to page seven. Okay. Oh, I need to do a shout out, by the way. Um, there's a lovely lady who works in the post office near me. Um, she did say she's going to try and have a look. But because of some fitness exercise thingy she was doing, she said she was going to be able to make it eight o'clock. I was going to give her a shout out about half past eight, but we've all got so engrossed, I've um, completely forgotten. So, hello. Sorry, I put you off now, haven't I? Okay, yeah, no, sorry, right, so. Uh, step 17, take the drive shaft 23i supplied with issue 23. Okay, so I'm actually getting the chassis as we speak. Um, okay, so now you know my problem is, is that the chassis is too big for the table. So I'm going to have to move house. It's funny, I've had, I've had a lot of people um, say to me, what are you going to do? Where are you going to put all of this? And I'm like, I actually haven't really thought that one through enough. So um, right now. In the magazine, I can't show you the exact same. Oh, sorry, I just pressed the wrong button. I wanted to focus that. Right. They've done it this way. And the way I know it's this way is if you look at the magazine, you've got you've got a little notch there. See at the bottom. So if you get that notch there, there, and you have it downwards towards you, then that's the correct orientation. Okay, and whoops, sorry, it's gone flying everywhere. Now, which way round is this going? Looks like it's this way round. So we've got like, if you were going to snap this in half, it'd probably break there. You see, it's the thinnest bit. That's going towards the front. And that's going, now there's a hole. Being careful how I hold this. Right, you see there's a hole there, so it's going to go underneath there, and you need to push it down a bit because you also need to put over, over this bit and under that bit. So bring that, and it's just going to pop into there, and that's interesting because... Right, it is a shaped hole, so you've got a flat bit on the top. That flat bit wants to actually go up like that, okay? And that will go in there perfect. Okay, you see that? It's just resting on there at the moment. But that will line in. Once you've got it lined in properly, you see I can't rotate that because it's in there with a lug, so it's not a perfect circle. Okay. okay. Uh, shall I go straight into stage 18, or do you want to still describe it? Um, well, no. Let's, let's carry on as else we've been going. You describe it. Okay, so it says, uh, check the difference to the <coughs> ends of the part 23i. Ensure you have, um, have it the right, right way around. Working from below, fit one end under the notch in the crossbar, on the rear subframe 17a and into the socket on the pulley part 22d the other end goes right. under the cross rod 27d uh, the shaft rests on the notch in the narrow crossbar part on 17a so yeah okay. Bit of a tongue twist, but... so uh, i've repositioned the camera while while uh, horlicks was describing that this is the end of the part that we've just fitted and what we want is the red part of the engine, not the black part. The red facing backwards. And that is somehow... Is that going? Okay. 
Am I now upside down? I am now. All right. Okay. That's yeah, what I've got. Yeah, so turn the assembly right way up to fit the engine to the subframe. Okay. So that's. So I'm going to say, don't don't orientate it the way that it says on seventeen. So what you have to do is turn it upside down, and then so it's now the correct way up. We know that from the suspension. So instead of going this bit over and that bit under, we're going the opposite way. And remember, so this flat bit of the notch is going to be pointing downwards. And that is this way. Right, okay. Right, this now makes perfect sense. So, right, so we have two two holes there, and they're going to go onto there. We did test fit this last week, so we've got two little sticky out bits there, and they're going to rest. You basically you're going to push that that hole there is going to go over there, and it, it, it's it'll go straight in because it's a hole, and then. You're kind of getting three points at once, and the other end is just falling out. So this isn't going to be as straightforward as you think. Right. Have I done something wrong? Because this isn't quite... Oh, I see. Right. As that screws in, that's going to lift that engine up a bit. But if the engine goes forward you see that it's this is coming out oh so now we've got to turn it around the other way have we yeah so now we've got to turn it around again after that's fitted how are we going to do that you need 20 hands <laughs> no i suggest maybe carefully grip the engine no, no we don't now that is stage 18 done. We're just fitting it at this stage. That 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 is it and then it's on to stage 19. Right. Yeah. Right, so that sounds like classic cars. So 32 sauce, yeah, that's what happened to me. Prop shaft is not long enough. I think the prop shaft is long enough, but it's just that where the engines because it's not screwed in, it's naturally going to fall forward. But I think once it's screwed, it looks like once it's screwed in, Samming said that, yeah. So it's just, it's easy to fall out at the moment, but. Oh, I see. Yeah. Right, right. So stage 19 uh, is securing the back end of the engine now. Yeah. Um, so take the beam 29V and fit across the two front beams on the subframe 27A and B in front of the engine assembly, but behind the fan. Gotcha. Right. Okay, so I'm doing a quick dry fit. So I'm gonna bring that in and just bring it in behind the fan and I'm gonna I'm gonna rest it. Okay. okay. So and then you can it's... see that. It says ensure the holes in 9V are over the holes in the beams. Yeah. Uh, so it says no. Just... Sorry, go on. Uh, yeah, it says no. The screw holes fit over the second holes in the beams, not the end ones. Yes. Yeah. Fit in place so with two PM screws. Two holes there. This is the front where my finger is at the moment. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring the beam in. I'm just going to bring it in behind the fan. You've got to kind of lift and pull and twist. Okay. So you've got this little notch on one side. That wants to be on, not on the red caps uh, tap side. Okay. So we kind of bring that under that pipe, lift it up so we can bring it over the fan. And I'm going to rest it on there. And obviously at this stage, it's not fitting. Um, are we actually fixing the screw? Just as we are. Yeah, so I'm going to get two, two GMs GM ready, screws. which is not that one. 
and I'm going to make sure I'm ready for this for, uh, before I go any further because if I'm struggling because of screws it's going to be tricky so we'll get the uh, in fact I'm going to go I'm just going to get everything ready that I can so a bit of washing up liquid why are we put washing up liquid on everybody right so i'm going to lift the engine up ah right on this side right there we are it's a little bit obscured by part of the engine you see there's a little notch there you see that notch the beam wants to go, the notch wants to end up in there, inside there. Okay, so obviously everything's falling apart as I do it. So it's not going to fit properly until it's screwed in. Oh. Okay, Penny's lost the plot. It reminds me of a real bus. And that's probably, you know. Probably easier because it's. Funny enough, I think it probably is easier. Um, I spoke to one of the mechanics at one of the companies I used to work at and I went, whoa, I bet it's a nightmare doing this. And he went, no, actually, it's a lot easier because everything's pretty much the same as a bus, as a car, but it's bigger. Mm. I'm like, okay, fair enough. Right, okay. So you do need 14 hands for this by the looks of it. So what I'm going to do, because this one is going to pretty much keep itself in because of the notch, I'm going to pop this screw in just enough so that it, it bites and no further. Okay. And then that will give me the room. To just reposition the engine. Oh, it's going to need that beam in as well. Oh, nightmare. Nightmare. This isn't fun. Right, so the engine's now lined up. Right, so I'm pulling the engine back. There we are. So we've got that all positioned. So I can get my last screw. In fact, that yeah, that'll hold. Okay, this isn't easy. It is rather fiddly. Well, you see, it's taken us, what, two hours? Although, in all fairness, it takes me longer to do it on screen because obviously I'm explaining things. Um, 32 Sol, how long did it take you to do yours? And would you describe yourself as a fast or a slow builder? Well, I know that you sort of said earlier he that he's taken him uh, since this morning to do it, uh, step seventeen because he was struggling with the pop shaft not fitting. Um, right. So he's, he's waiting to see how you do yours. I see. Okay. Okay. So as usual. I'm doing a little bit on each side. I don't put I don't put the whole screw in and then work on the next one. I get them all in just enough to bite and then I'll do the next one just a little bit. And then just do a little bit on each one. Right, I can see why they've done it this way now. Cuz now that we've got this beam in, it is holding everything in place. Everything's lovely now, look. Whoops, I keep moving this. Be careful with this part because it'll move. This is our little cap and is it the radiator fill up bit? The thermostat. Right. Okay, so next you need to carefully turn the assembly on its side. On its side. So that you can fix the engine in place through the holes in part 27D. Okay. Support the assembly. 
and engine while you fix in place with two GM screws. Okay. I would like to put something behind that, but I haven't got anything to put behind it. So I'm just going to have to be very careful. Right, so I can check my engine now, which actually isn't Oh, it is lined up. Right. Obviously, because I've laid it on its side, the engine's tried to fall what is now downwards. So I'm thinking I'm going to bring that screw in first. So two GMs just like before. And I'll load up a screw. A little bit of washing up liquid. And then from behind, I'm just going to push the engine back. It's hard to see on the camera. But I can clearly see that the the engine, the, 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 the holes have lined up. And the reason that they've lined up is because I've checked it while I was doing the, uh, the, the bar that went across. Okay, and what I've done, as I normally do, you see I've just popped that screw in just enough so that it grabs. And now I'll, I'll put a, a screw into that one. And then I will do a couple of turns on each screw, go on to the next one, then go on to the first one, backwards and forwards until they're both nice and tight. Okay, a bit of washing up liquid. I know I thank him every week for it, and he's, but Dave Mill and Dave Say, they were the ones who got us onto the washing up liquid. And I just can't sing the praises enough. Okay, so a couple of screws onto the first screw. And then a few more screws. And then move on to the second one. A few more screws, say two, three turns. Back onto the first. Back onto the second one, and it's starting to pull the engine in place now. As the screws get tighter, it's pulling the engine. Well, obviously, it's pulling the engine across, but in the correct orientation, it's pulling it down. Okay, and so long as we've got all the prop shaft and the bar in place earlier, everything should fit. All right. Okay, there's a little bit of wobble on there. Um, I'm not too worried about a bit of wobble because a real engine moves about, vibrates anyway, doesn't it? Right, okay. So, now I've popped those screws in. I know it doesn't say to do this in the magazine, but I'm now going to go back and check my work. So we see that that prop shaft is in. We can see that that bit there is in. There is movement, but that's fine. I can see that the bar is in, and that's solid. That's not moving. And the engine, oh, I careful there, guys, because I keep touching that and moving it in. And the engine, Actually, that's in solid, that engine, pretty much. Okay, so uh, effective, so I've just said that his has got so much play in the prop shaft, it falls out and it looks yeah. a lot nicer than mine. So check. all I can recommend is just yeah, really check your right screws. Yeah. yeah. Check it the right way and just check all your screws are nice and tight. Um, it might be better if you're using the actual screwdriver supplied, might be a good idea to find like a bigger screwdriver so you can get a bit more of a, a turn yeah. on it. I, I actually use quite a large head. I use the, uh, the CRV10, which means absolutely nothing. But of this set of six, you see it's one of the larger ones that I used. Um, but th this is the main bit there. This is actually, it's not a circle. It's... Um, it's like a, a, a crescent, crescent, uh, what do you call it? Like circle with a, with a flat top. A semicircle. And you've got to, 
Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, semicircle. That that'd work, won't it? Um and by the looks of things, make sure you've got this bit in as well. So, is everyone happy with that? It does say study the diagram carefully and note the position of the front of the engine in relation to the beam. Um, so, yeah. So, shall we have a quick look at section 20? Yes, okay. So, section 20. We're now going to mount the radiator assembly on the front of the beams 27A and B using okay. mounting brackets 28H. Right, so. So once you've got that, bracket. it says, uh, at the same time, guide the peg on the end of the thermostat pipe, 28A, into the top socket on the radiator. Oh, I see. In red. Um, okay, so you're not going to see this too well, guys, and I do apologize. And it also just... says, um, make sure, ensure the fan 26D fits into the fan ring on the back of the radiator and fix in place so, with two GM screws. We have that black fan that's going to go inside this circle from the radiator. And what we're going to do is we're going to kind of, right, I'm trying to think the best way. Right. So, Go for this peg there first. As you see, there's a hole there. Now it makes sense why we have that hole. Uh, and not one. Oh, we got one on the bottom. Okay. So aim for that hole. But bringing these little wings, it's kind of got to go in at an angle. And then give it a gentle push. Line those up. And then just check your fan. And that's just going to be done by sight. Um, and that, I would say, lines up pretty perfect. You've got quite a bit of give because we're dealing with plastic part. Oh, there we go. Right. Okay, I'm going to do that again because I kind of discovered as I went. Right. As you bring this in, you kind of... Bringing these tabs up and that aiming for that hole as well. This will move about a little bit, so don't think that's that's, that's stuck where it is. So we're going to lift that up a little bit to slide that in. And it's gone in perfect this time, but there was a little bit of, um, there's a bit of a stop at the bottom. And that was just where the bottom of the fan didn't quite want to go into the hole. So, there you go. I would say that's lined up perfectly. I'm really struggling with these camera angles today. There we go. You see that they're pretty much... That one's not quite lined up perfectly, but you can see that we've got a bit of manipulation there. Because it's plastic parts, they've got a certain amount to give. And they are GM screws? GM, yeah. Okay. So... My flywheel does not turn and test fit an engine and prop fit like pennies. Uh, my flywheel doesn't turn either. Now that I've got this prop uh, shafty bit in, it's not going anywhere. Right. So, I'm going to pop the first screw in. You know what I'm going to say. I'm just going to put it in enough just to grab. Okay. So, that's not going anywhere now. And then we'll pop the second GM screw in. For a change, it looks like I've put just the right amount of washing up liquid on the little bit of plastic. I normally waste half of it, don't I? Right, and that one's in just enough to grab. So now we've got the opportunity to just check the parts are all going to fit properly. There we go. That's... That needed a little bit of force to go in properly. Um, the radiator is in. The fan is in. So I'm ready to go now. So I'm going to have to just lift the camera up a bit. Because the screwdriver is a bit long otherwise. And a few turns on that. 
and a few turns on that. You did hear some clicking earlier on, probably, uh, just because I didn't wasn't turning it properly. So make sure it's got a good grip because obviously if it's if it's clicking like I just did it, it's just going to strip the head, and you're going to have a bad time. So that's as tight as it wants to go. This one's just giving me a bit of uh, bother. There we go. Right. So that radiator is not really going to go anywhere. Remember, I did struggle with this because some of my screws last week, they wouldn't tighten up fully. Um, however, because I've got screws going in at different places, that's not going anywhere, so I'm I'm not concerned. Although one of those screws is loose. Okay, are we finished yet? No. Right, stage twenty-one. Oh, let me just show you this. So, so that's what it's going to look like roughly from the front. Okay. Now, I, during the week, I was having a look at the radiator, and because I didn't paint the radiator, I just went straight on. Do you remember I did some uh, weathering? Um, and it actually came off, and that was because paint doesn't stick to bare plastic. Um, so if you do want to weather up that, that uh, radiator, just to give it a bit more detail, probably want to just pop a little black primer on it first. Okay, so stage 21. Yeah. So take the radiator lower pipe 28i and fit the peg into the upper end into the socket in the back plate. Okay. So what I did while um, Horlix was describing that was just turn the uh, I've turned the chassis round so that is it actually in that orientation, which is going to give me a problem with my camera angles. This is just too big. It's too big for me to deal with. So looking at this. Okay, whatever happens, the pipe is going that way round. We've got the 90 degree angle bit at the bottom. And it looks like. Ah, is this. Okay, right. I can't figure out where this other bit's... Oh, I see. Right. Okay. So, remember when we had that hole there and we had another hole on the bottom? So, we need to, this to go into the hole on the bottom. And I'm going to try and do it by feel. There we go. So, I've just... Obviously, the other way around, what I've done is I've got that peg and I've just run it along the radiator like that until it falls into the hole. You know roughly where the hole is, and it's gone. There we are. So I've got my finger underneath it supporting that, and the hole is... Can't find it. All right. It's on the engine, and it's just... Can't see it. There we are. It's out of focus, but it's if you follow the fan back, this side of the fan, follow it back. In fact, you see this hole there, it's below there. And that is going to not push fit very easily. So I can see one or two people breaking that. Right. If it's too much, you might just need to give it a bit of a scrape, like I have done on a couple of the other parts. Yeah, it's not going to go with tweezers. That's a shame, because if I can't get that all in, there's going to make a little bit of a gap. But for now, I'm going to go with that. Okay. All right. Um, and well, yeah, that uh, that completes this issue.
Okay. Oh, yeah, I was looking at this piece and going, oh, why isn't that? Why haven't we done this bit? This is the bit we did right at the beginning. And that's going to go in like that, isn't it? Yeah. Um, so do I still leave that out? I reckon you can glue that now. Right, so I'm just looking at the comments. Right, so my flywheel doesn't turn anymore. Oh, do you mean? Oh, actually, it does. Sorry, I tell a lie. Yeah, why do why do they want us to move that then? Now I'm worried if it's if it's turning, not turning enough. Oh God, yeah. Why? Yeah, why? Because we, we mentioned that last. When we did it, didn't we? I really don't think it's anything to work. I don't even think it, I don't think it needs to turn at all. Right. I can't right, see okay. why it needs to. Do. Although, take... can you get your finger on it from underneath? Yeah. Oh, not from underneath. No. But it definitely does turn like. Yes, yeah, so you're not going to be able to get to that because all the door panel, the floor well, will be I'm, down. I'm wondering if it's going to connect some to something and maybe it's going to act as a pulley. Like if there's a power pack there or something, and it'll be a pulley or something, or and then it'll do, I don't know, maybe the engine noises or something are going to come from there. Um, I'm just going to pop pop a little dab of glue on this, and for this I'm using a thick. I'm using a gel glue because I want something nice and solid, and I don't want it running everywhere. Teddy says, "Looking issue twenty five, stage nine. Hang on, let me see if I can, I can get that up this end. Yeah. God, I hope we don't have to pull this out now. Right, that is really looking the biz now, isn't it? Okay, so. Here we go, stage nine. Yeah, they did say they want us to, uh, well, they want it to move. And if a belt. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's a good point, because if you now put a belt on there, you're not going to get it on. Unless there's a cog. Yeah, it says check the flywheel rotates on part 25O. If it is stiff, loosen the DP screw. It was used to fit the flywheel. See, mine's now gone stiff. Where this um, prop shaft is now pushing it, it's, it's gone stiff. So um, I'm now concerned that mine's a little bit too stiff. So I don't really want to be pulling things apart. To just loosen it. Because mm. at the mo if I if I if I undid it all now to get to it, it's uh, I could probably it'd be about six screws. Yeah, no, I thought, I, I, yeah, I think. It's not meant to move. I don't, I don't, I don't know what what step nine's about. <coughs> well, I, there's nothing. There's, there's no reason there's been for a it few, to move. There's been a few incidences where we've gone. Well, why have we done that? That seems a bit pointless. And then a few issues later on, you've then gone. Oh, I'm glad they did that. Otherwise, we wouldn't have been able to do it. Yeah. No, I completely understand, Teddy. I think. I am as well. I'm quite confused. Yeah, yeah. Bizarre. So I'm, I'm I, sure it'll come I'm to. Uh, if it's... You know, I'm sure it'll come to light soon. Yeah, yeah. If at all. It will all be all right in the end. So, uh, conclusions. What an issue. Good enough, wasn't it? Right, I'm trying to get this. Um... Can you just talk, Horlicks? Hello. Is there a technical issue? One, two, three. 
Oh, I'm pleased you have taken the other set of glasses off. I was worried you were going to leave them both on. <laughs> yeah. I don't have to get for you, can be. So for me, what I enjoyed most about that was that we were starting to collect bits and we're now putting all of those bits. So I haven't got a big pile of bits on the uh, on the shelf now. I've still got the front wing and I've still got the grill and I've still got the stairs and the bonnet. But all those little fiddly bits that we've been collecting, they're now on the bus. So that makes me happy. Yeah, definitely. Keep still. Keep, God, yeah, I hate having all these loose parts. Yeah. I can see the point. If they gave us all of the... I mean, if they gave us all those parts with this issue, then we would have had some quite light issues, and this one would have been super heavy. Um, it's like, you know, on the Millennium Falcon, where they give us a bit that we don't use just about every issue... And then after about four or five issues, they go, right, collect those bits because they'd be just too much for one issue, um, especially the big metal parts. If they, you know, they gave you um, hardly anything for three or four issues and then gave you tons and tons. Do you remember everyone, everyone nearly fainted when we got two bits of chassis on the trot? Mm. Um, hello, Izzy Harris. How, how are you? Oh, it, it it was you, Izzy, wasn't it, who won one of the screw pots? Yeah, that's we right. There was a bit of complication because I had the email. <laughs> yeah, I sent the screw pot out to uh, the address that she gave me, and then we uh, we got a message from that person saying, well, I've just had this screw pot. I don't know what it is. Um, yeah, it certainly was a long one. We've had no time to... Uh, to talk about anything else, which is fine because I've not actually had anything else to talk about. Um, I'm on holiday from work for two weeks starting Saturday. Um, so I'm going to have some real quality time over the weekend to work on my Newport bus. So I might be able to bring you an update. It's going to be a slow process because the primer is spray a bit of primer on, leave it overnight and then do some more work the next day um <clears throat> so um it's it th i should hopefully have some kind of update for you um 32 soul sank i just hope the chassis can take all the weight um i think it will um because i quite often um push down but i tend to push at the wheels to try the suspension i don't like pushing in the middle because it's held together by four screws but the way that the screws they kind of connect in so it's kind of adding it's and also you've got these flat panels so it's all kind of pushing together why well, so i just know you are really close to the screen um so um yeah it's um it kind of pushes together and down that kind of it's all the surface area adding support. Um, so yeah, is he? Yeah, so you've got your your pot then, have you now? So uh, I'm gonna flick over to Horlicks while I carry on smoking my cigarette. Oh, that's all right. Yeah, because I did reply to the email to say what was what had occurred, and I didn't get a response. So um, I'm glad. Uh, I'm glad that's all sorted. Yeah. So um, it looks like we've now got another regular viewer in 32 souls. So that makes me happy. Um, and as Dave Mill says, we are a good group. Um, so did everyone enjoy that? Um, oh, you know, we haven't done, don't you? We haven't done next week. Now, the magazine, it's a really light magazine. There's normally two articles um, and a poster. Um, because the instructions were so so long, it's only the, it's only the one article. It's a good article. I'm not complaining about the magazine, um, but that's all the room they've got left. That uh, three pages, and a poster, and that's it. But then, to be fair, you spent so much time building it. You're not going to have so much time left to read the articles, are you? So. Uh, 
Kale, tell you what, we'll show that on the magazine. So next week's issue is. Yeah, I didn't have a scan of that. I don't think. Did you know? I did. I'm sure I put it up. It's not much of a picture, actually. It just pretty much shows what we've already got. Focus. And the description says the exhaust system, complete with silencer, is fit to the subframe of the model. Because that's a relief because my model's not going to make any noise because it's got a, a silencer. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I, it's too small for me to see, but. Um, I did find oh, it. Oh, you got it. Okay. I must have missed there it. So that's what next week. I'm afraid my scan isn't isn't awesome, but um, there's not a massive noticeable difference. Um, maybe a bit that little bit on the rear wheel that wasn't there at the moment. Um, yeah. Mm. So next week we'll learn all about. Alan's reminding me about the bins. Um, thank you, Alan. <laughs> <laughs> After um, next week, a hundred more to go. Yes, yeah. yes. I'm still only on issue six. I was, I'm still waiting for a few missings. Yeah. Now I'm going to put it out there. What we're trying to do, uh, we're trying to. Other than the build, obviously, we do that every week. I'll just come back to me. Um, we're looking for uh dave has very kindly agreed to appear on the show once every four weeks um i'm going to try and do my second bus update once every four weeks and Horlix hasn't been able to this month because of the cock up with harsh yet but he's going to give us an update on the stage that he's at every four weeks um it'd be nice to have some uh what i'm going to call irregular guests so not someone who's going to come on the show every four weeks, but we'd like to have someone one week and then four weeks later we'll have someone else. Is anyone interested would like to come on the show and like to talk about their build and their thoughts? Maybe we can fire some questions at you. Um, drop us a message on Facebook or drop us a message in the comments. Um, I keep forgetting to put Horlicks's channel in the description. Hopefully I'll try and remember to do that this week. Um, drop a message on his channel. Um, but yeah, um, so Hawk, uh, sorry, 32 Sol is saying that he watches the videos. Um, also, a question I'm going to ask you is um, obviously, the last few weeks I've stopped putting out all my other videos, I've taken a break from YouTube. Um, do you feel that that takes anything away from the channel? Um, what we try to do on the live build is get straight into the build and then we do all the waffle afterwards so that if you're watching the video just for the build, you, you can cut the video short once the build is done. Um, do you guys want more or are you happy with what we've got? I'm happy with what we've got. Um, but I'm thinking if you want like a, I don't know how I would do a cut down version of this. How could I get all of this into... Um, how can I get all of this into a 15 minute video? That's got to be a challenge of the century, isn't it? <laughs> um, so, and Kingsman CIA and SWAT says you'd like to, but doesn't know how to get on video with you. Right. The, what you all you need is, um, a microphone. Um, if we can't get you on video, we can, excuse me, we can still get you on sound. It's it's not going to be a problem. Yeah, I mean, chances are you, you, you'll have a smartphone um, and, and that's all you need. You should be able to do it with your smartphone. Yeah. Um, hello, Ver, Ver Wayne. I've never heard you. Uh, have you watched us? Have you commented on our videos before? Um, but... Yeah, no, that's fine. I mean, it's a lot easier for me to do it. Just, I mean, I'm going to be doing this live show anyway because I need the foot. I need to get the footage anyway. Um, but I think it's um, by having the little recaps on on the previous issues. Um, you know, a Horlicks being what you're about twenty, about twenty two weeks behind us. 
so that's that's nearly six months and it's uh it's a lot of words i'm looking for um by the time we've got we focus so much on these current issues it's nice to have a little recap and then maybe in another six months time we can ha we can recap on issue one two three you know onwards meanwhile you're, you're recapping on this current issue well we're doing issue 46 or or whatever 50 50 about issue 60 so um the only thing i i worry about now is what's going to happen after issue 130 we're all going to say goodbye and go our separate ways aren't we mm. i think that would be a sad moment so well, do you have anything to add holix no i think i think that's it for me i, I mean yeah. the only update i've got is i have built a root master this week um, oh you know. have let's have a look at this because if you're not subscribed to Horlick's channel you won't notice this um do you want to tell us all about it some people would have seen this model before but not your model yeah so this is the wilco uh version of blocks and it's not actually a root master but it's it's a london it's a red bus basically red double like a bus so it took about probably half an hour to whack that together. I did that uh, on my channel. I've done a, a time-lapse video of it. Um, so yeah, that is the build. And then I couldn't stop there. Uh, I was watching a, a different YouTuber. Um, well, we both were actually Penny. And there was a comment in that video to say, it would be good to have LED lights on it, but it's not possible. It's too small. So me and Penny being me and Penny, we both looked at each other and said, yep, yeah, challenge accepted. So after I built this, I have done a bit of wiring, a little bit of super gluing. I mean, it isn't perfect. I don't know if you can just see that. Some of the blocks are slightly a bit wishy-washy because I had to try and run cables through underneath and I was doing a lot of filing and, and stuff. But uh, all I've done is soldered it to some micro LEDs in the front. Uh, soldered a standard USB power cable on, and now I have some working headlights on the bus. There Which I think is absolutely amazing. And I'm not going to stop there. I have got more plans. I would like to do interior lights because it can all run on the same circuit. I'm going to do interior lights. I'm going to do rear lights and get red LEDs. And I might even light up the uh, number plate here somehow. So it's, it's still a project I'm working on. But yeah, there you go. Challenge complete. You can do now anything. That, that bus, is, I mean, it's not an amazing bus. It's, it's a good bus, but it's five pounds from Wilco. So uh, I think for, for, for what the what the price is, that, that's brilliant. Brilliant, yeah. Um, I, I enjoyed it, and I think you enjoyed it as well. Okay, I'm so trying, I'm trying to paste my Facebook page into the chat, and for some reason, I'm going to have to type it. Oh, you know why, don't you? I'm using the wrong keyboard. Oh. Um, I, I have two computers because um, I, I, I'm asking a lot of my computer. So there we go. Right. So I've just pasted in the le into the chat uh, my Facebook page. And I've just brought... Oh, that's you, is it? No, that's me. Oh, God. Um, so, yeah, if anyone wants to uh, add me on Facebook, you're more than welcome to. Um, what's that? Took me more than 30 minutes for the lovely lady to find my copy of the London bus from the pack of the store. Um, but yeah, no, I, I mean, that's you've taken a really simple model there and you've just taken it to the next stage and and you did it so quickly. Um, that's what I was surprised with, yeah. So, um, I can't wait. As I say, I mean, I'm, there's so much to do. I mean, like, for instance, I'm just trying to put these wires in, I think. 
this is like a power a small power bank. I could yeah. easily leave that on and then I mean it's gonna look a bit unsightly, but I could tuck all that inside the bus. You would never see it. But yeah. Um but yeah, I'm not gonna stop there. I've got more to do. I want I want to light the whole thing up. So uh, I need to get hold of some LEDs and things and, and then I shall continue. But yeah, really in a few, good. in about four or five weeks' time, if I've done it, then it's something else to talk about at the end of the show. Yeah. Exactly, and then we can talk about the next challenge accepted. Yes, I mean, you know, <laughs> you know, you you could just carry on. I could mount a motor in the front and have working windscreen wipers, and you know, I could do sound effects, perhaps um, as a smoke machine in it, so it billows out black smoke out the back. <laughs> don't get me started you've, ob you've obviously seen our buses then have you yeah well in my car i mean i've got a diesel they all seem to do that if you boot them a bit but and it's me thinking buses were supposed to do that <laughs> right okay look i'm gonna um i'm gonna round the show up now if you don't mind because uh I have to be up at five o'clock in the morning. It's a shame that this issue didn't come out next week when I'm on holiday. Uh, Dave says he's built. Do you know, I really want to do that R2-D2. Um, I really, really do want to do it. But um, it's uh, I've got two. Um, I've got two other builds on the go. Um, I've stopped the 3D printer because I bought a 3D printer. Um, I, I'm hearing a rumor that they're doing the X-Wing um, when they finish the R2-D2, which I'm quite interested in. Um, but the R2-D2, because that, that, that's, uh, is that a Diagostini? Yeah, it's a Diagostini one, isn't it? Yeah, that's Diagostini. Um, I'm hearing the DeLorean is plagued with problems. And uh, then I would get wrapped up in the mods as well, and I'd probably spend more money on the mods than than the actual part work. Yeah, I'm like that. I mean, I really, really want the mods because I know, I mean, they're doing an excellent job with the mods, absolutely phenomenal. Yeah. But <coughs> quite rightly, they're a lot of money, and I just haven't got the funds to do it. Um, yeah. I mean, you know, I have, I don't know if you know any of them, but I have spoken to Chloe uh, and she has offered me like a, a payment plan, bless her. Okay. But still, I can't really afford to do it at the moment. So I'm going to look look at my finances. I mean, this, the bill's not finished yet. So I've still got a bit of time, I think. But the R is, I think it's the R2. They do a nice little one where um, it's either DeLorean or the R2-D2 where... If you subscribe now, you get like six issues every four weeks instead of four. You you won't catch up ever, but it's um it's it's a nice idea. But I what I'd like to do is rather than worry about can my monthly finances manage it, is to save up the money and then just buy it in one go, mm. and then I can build as much as I want each week. Um, but <clears throat> I also want to get different types of things um someone mentioned the db5 earlier on and i've got to confess um i had i had i met a guy who he'd bought well he said he'd more he said the james bond car and i said oh what the db5 and he went yeah um the guy obviously knows nothing about vehicles because it turns out to be uh lewis hamilton's um uh, mclaren which is kind of nothing like the James Bond car. Um, and I, the, the price he wanted for that one was a little bit too much. So I said, thanks, but no thanks. But, um, but there's some other projects I want to go. I'm getting into my 3D printing. Um, at the moment, I can only find the DB5 fully built for like £1,200. And I can't see the point in, in buying a ready-built model because part of the fun is is actually building it yeah, um yeah. i'm doing the harley davidson which is a motorbike and i'm doing the millennium falcon which is star trek a star wars build so i could end up doing two star wars um 
And I thought maybe about a flying model next, something like the DC-3. That could be fun. Um, but we'll see what's coming. I mean, the the Terminator was uh, it's didn't get past the test stage, but um, because I had signed up for the uh, the Terminator, and there was also the Warhammer painting one, um, I'll actually get the four first four issues for free if it does go live. So, but the Terminator, I'd really be interested in that because that's. Um, that's th that's that's half scale, I think, isn't it? The Terminator. So we're talking about a three foot yeah. tall model. Do I? I don't know where I'm going to put them, but <laughs> you have to sleep with them. The Terminator will have to go in your bed. Yeah, well, that'd be a great thing to wake up to in the morning, won't it? <laughs> um, but we'll see. We'll see what comes out. Um, you know, I I mean, I might even do the R two. Um, but I've also found uh, a, a file on there's a website called Thingy uh, Thingiverse, and they're full of 3D printed uh, files. And I found a really good R2D2 because I've got a slightly larger build plate. Obviously, I can I can make the parts bigger. Um, and I'm wondering if it's possible to print off the uh, the R2D2 and then and then add electronics to it so that it does things so but i say we don't know what's coming out we, we you know the, someone i don't know where they got the information from but it, it seems to suggest that the london taxi is more than just on a wish list so i, th I think someone said that the london taxi is going to come out after the london bus yeah. um, which is feasible but Again, I'm not going to get my hopes up on that um, because we don't know where the information came from. But um, maybe there's a theme coming out of London stuff. So maybe after London Taxi, we'll have build build the London telephone box. So yeah, I like the um, I like builds that are very that have got electronics involved with them. So. You know, like the Delorean, the R, the R two. It's got Wi Fi and all sorts of that. What we'll have, yeah. And obviously, I know yes. the Route Master hasn't got as many. It's got, it's got some working lights and stuff, but just anything that's <coughs> got any sort of electrics, I love. Yeah, that's why I'm really tempted by the R two D two because I can apparently I can program it to go and make me a cup of coffee or something. Well, and, um, maybe. I'm, Am I right in thinking that you can put that into sentry mode and it'll just sit there all day? And if you, uh, if someone goes into your house, there it'll send you a text message saying activity in your house. I'm not sure about that, but I know it does its own thing. Yeah. Um, so well, I just, I think it's probably just going to get in the way. I'm trying to cook yeah. your dinner and it's up behind you. Yeah, flicking <laughs> yeah, its things right out at you, and yeah, no, <laughs> I've got strange visions in my head now of you when you said flicking its things out to you. London tube train. Now, what a brilliant idea! Um, well, look, oh, guys, yeah. I love trains. We could uh, we could sit here all night coming up with great ideas for for part works, but unfortunately, well, they actually do, don't they? They do locomotive builds, don't they? Anyway. Yes, um, um, don't they do some train? Um, steam, that steam kit was good. Yeah. And, but yeah, anyway, yeah. as you say, we could go on all night about that. Yeah. So I'm going to have to uh, draw this to a close. Um, thank you so much for everyone who's been watching. And thank you to everyone that's still watching. Um, I hope you enjoyed that build as much as I did. Um, it was hard work. Um but it's very sad. Actually, it wasn't quite as hard as I thought it was going to be. Um, you know, obviously, you open up the magazine, you see nine pages worth of instructions, and your first reaction is, oh, run away. Um, but, yeah, it, it worked. And it's it's we've got rid of some loose little bits, so I'm, I'm happy with that. Um, mm -hmm. So with that, I'm going to say goodbye, and I mm -hmm. hope to see you all next week. Oh, I better just say, yeah, Ted, uh, Ted just said um, we get a an app to control R2-D2. Yes, I know, we get 
you can have that option, but there is also autonomous mode as well. So you've got a choice to. But yeah, anyway, thanks everyone. And yeah, um, yeah see you next week. Yeah, three hour show. Oh. <laughs> Okay, so yeah, three hours. So um, yeah, I don't know what well, we've got the exhaust system. I don't think it's going to be three hours next week, but hopefully I'll have some updates on my my second bus. Um, so with that, I shall uh, sign off. So take care, guys. Bye bye. Bye.